Michigan Replay. With Bo Schembechler. And Jim Brandstatter. Brought to you in part by the General Motors Corporation. By General Motors Parks. By Buick and your Buick dealer. The Great American Road belongs to Buick. By the financial professionals at Payne Weber. By the Unisys Corporation. By Domino's Pizza. And by Bud Light. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Michigan Replay. The Wolverines and Buckeyes had their clash for 1987, and the Buckeyes came out on top 23-20. We'll have highlights of that during the next half hour. We'll also have a special look at Michigan's all-time leading ground gainer, uh, the graduating Jamie Morris. But before we get to that, let's first talk about Michigan-Ohio State and that loss. And, Bo, I think it was two separate reasons for this one. One, missed opportunities in the first half, and second, turnovers in the second half. Well, we probably should have led uh, by a couple of touchdowns or more at halftime. And, uh, but we blew uh, a lot of opportunities, particularly from uh, midway in that second period on. It was unbelievable some of the things that happened. But the uh, bottom line was that this team is the most prolific turnover team that I've ever had at Michigan. And when you have uh, that kind of a situation and a defense that has given up more big plays than any defense we've ever had at Michigan, that combination has lost some games for us. Have you, you've always coached against turnovers. I mean, that's been one of the things that's happened at Michigan over the years since you've been there. Have you been able to put a finger on why it seems to hit you all at once? Well, one of the things is that uh, we're playing with a lot of young players. Now, someday these young players will not be turning the ball over and they're going to win a lot of football games. But right now, uh, they just turn it over too much. They make mistakes and... Uh, uh, ball carrying mistakes, passing mistakes, uh, one thing after another. <laughs> that, that's been our, really our biggest problem this year. Well, we'll be back and we'll take a look at the first half highlights, the good first half of the Wolverines. That's next when Michigan Replay continues. First half, I thought maybe we'd have uh, one or two more scores even, and um, I thought we were on our way to a, maybe even a route. Uh, it felt pretty good. We're, we're really moving well, and... Um, you know, I have something like this happen. Uh, it's just, you give them credit that came back and uh, plugged away at us, but uh, it was definitely hard for us to take. Hey, how you doing? Good. In fact, I feel like light. Hey, mm. what the? Mm. Oops. <laughs> Oh, I am so... Oh, no. Oh. Well, I meant Bud Light. If you want the less filling light with the first name and taste, ask for Bud Light, because everything else... You all right? Sure, just a little lightheaded. It's just a light. Downtown. 2.30 a.m. Empty city. Empty streets. At times like this, you really appreciate how good Mr. Goodwrench is. He has the high-tech electronic equipment to analyze and adjust your high-tech General Motors car so you can drive with confidence anytime, anywhere. Mr. Goodwrench, no one knows your GM car better. No one. The totally new Buick Regal. There's nothing like it on the American road. Out on the horizon, the heart of a Buick, the start of a regal new day. The great American love was made for regal. It's a regal reward. It's the way it should be in this regal American land. The great American love belongs to Buick. It's really ours. It's everything we've ever wanted. We'd like to thank the people who made this possible. Our realtor. Your parents. <laughs> and the folks at Great Lakes Bank Corp. They helped us pick the right mortgage. With bi-weekly payments that help build equity faster. And save thousands in interest. <laughs> Thanks, Great Lakes. <laughs> we couldn't have done it without you. Great Lakes Bank Corp, your partner in life.
At the opening of the Michigan-Ohio State game, uh, the Wolverines won the toss, elected to defer the decision till the second half. Uh, your defense came out, really stuffed Ohio State after they made a good first down play. Then you took the ball, and on offense, it looked as though you had a game plan going that was drawn up on the blackboard. Well, we had, uh, we kicked off because, uh, we deferred because of the wind. It was a very strong wind. And uh, so when we first got the opportunity to get the ball, we stayed pretty much on the ground uh, and uh, blocked them well and ran pretty well. And this was the only pass you threw in this drive, and it was a big This one. was a third down play, and he hit the fullback in the flat. and got a block there that uh, sprung him down uh, deep in their territory and uh, gave us an opportunity to go for our first score. Here, Jamie breaks outside on a uh, power-off tackle play, goes down in close, tried to reach it in, didn't quite make it, and then scores on the next play, and we take a 7 to nothing lead. With that first possession, you had to feel very, very positive about the way the offense was playing. Frankly, Jim, I felt all afternoon we could move the football, but in some cases, we just uh, stopped ourselves, and... and uh, our defense was playing well in the first half. As a matter of fact, they, they did an excellent job in the first half, except for the one drive after we had fumbled the ball at midfield that gave them their score in the first half. And you used the screen a lot against the high state. We screened uh, probably uh, four or five times in the game, and uh, all of them turned out to be uh, successful. So that, that was a good football play for us. Here's a big play. This is a play that uh, we got hurt on. Uh, it was what we call a strike game. It would be a halfback from the sideline blitz. We didn't get a man out to block him, and, um, and we ended up getting our quarterback hurt. Came in with Michael Taylor, and that changed a little bit because you got a little bit more option look. A little more option look and a little more running. Uh, this is a reverse uh, with Colasar uh, carrying the ball uh, that put us down in it around the 25-yard line. And uh, you really called out all the stops offensively. Ran a couple different reverses from different looks. Right. We ran, uh, and so the, all the screens were never the same screen twice, really. Um, we kick a field goal here, first play of the second quarter, uh, to go ahead uh, 10 to nothing. That was a little disappointing that we failed to get the uh, touchdown here. Here's a third 19, Ohio State in trouble, and sacked and uh, forced to punt. So we're going to get the ball back here again, leading 10 to nothing. And, and this is, uh, again, all Michigan so far in this football game. Well, I think, you know, the first half was pretty much ours, except we didn't get enough scores. This is an option play. Uh, pitch out to Jamie for good yardage. Uh, running a little wishbone here. This is Phil Webb uh, banging in there to about the 22, getting five, six yards of crack. And again, you felt you could run pretty much all day? I thought we could run on this team, yes. Uh, most all day. This is an option play and a missed tackle, and uh, Michael Taylor gets down in there close. Uh, we got down in there and uh, called a a uh, play action pass and had the tight end wide open and and uh, threw the ball into the ground and missed an touch, easy touchdown opportunity there had to settle for a field goal so it's 13 to nothing um but uh, we also in uh, this is the next drive after they had punted down to us uh Colasar brings a punt all the way back to their 20 leading 13 to nothing we're called for holding we come right back with some draw plays and a good pass by mike and we're back out to midfield again. And, this is the and, big uh, turnover. Move. This is the turnover again. Uh, young freshman fullback uh, gets hit at the line of scrimmage. Always run that ball in the critical area with two hands on the ball, and we forgot that. And this is the one drive that you said you weren't pleased with the defense on. No. Uh, this uh, drive is the only drive they had during the play, and in the second play of this drive, they fumbled the ball, and we recovered, and the official didn't see it. That could have got us out of trouble real quick. But anyway, um, they drove on down in this uh, drive and uh, scored on us to make it 13 to 7. And they but, really gave up the run. They just started to throw it. Right. This was really their only bona fide offensive effort in the first half. And for us to end up uh, only ahead 13 uh, to 7, Jim, uh, with the amount of offense we had the first half is really a crime. And that, in the long run, that's what really hurt us. So at halftime, it is 13 to 7. And even though you were moving the ball well, uh, you still had the lead. You still had to feel positive. Or were there little doubts back well, there? Well, there's always in the back of your mind. You see, uh, being a turnover team, which we're unaccustomed to doing, when we used to do that in the old days, we, we always had a defense that stepped in, put a stopper on them, and we got the ball back. 
uh, we can't expect that this defense because they're they're hurt physically and and uh, we're not quite as good uh, as we have been and we give up too many big plays. So you're always a little apprehensive when you got a defense like that. Okay, we'll be back and we will take a look at the second half and the exciting finish of Michigan Ohio State for 1987. That's next when Michigan Replay continues. They, they just they just came out and throwing a ball and they just came after it and uh, you know we tried to do our best and and uh, we stayed after, but, you know, scored and said. A special report from Payne Weber. Investors have a lot of questions these days. Let's get some answers from the president of Payne Weber. Should the individual investor be in the market these days? Yes, I think so. We look for normal investment uh, returns of 10 to 15 percent over next year. I think the two key things, are they willing to stay in the market for the long pull, which I would say is a year, and two, can they stand more than normal volatility? And if they can answer that, the answer is yes. Do you see opportunities ahead? Yes, I do. The real opportunities probably are in transportation stocks, uh, some financial service stocks, selected retailers, uh, maybe some of the autos. Uh, those would be a good group, I think, to look at. What are Payne Weber investment executives doing for their clients? We've asked executives to review all of our clients' holdings to make sure that the securities in their portfolios are the ones that are right for this market environment. And I would urge all investors to do the same no matter which firm they deal with. Thank you, and goodbye for now from Payne Weber. Like to deposit check, please. Jeffrey Houdre has never heard of Unisys. All the way from France. It's from my grandfather. Have a seat. But Unisys systems process half of the checks in the U.S. each day. 30 of the world's 50 largest banks rely on Unisys for everything from international bank transfer to quick customer service. Jeffrey just knows that a new 10-speed bike is almost his. Unisys and banking, the power of two. Guy came by today trying to sell me some imitation body parts. Copycat hoods, doors, and fenders for GM cars. And I wasn't buying. You see, I know some of those imitations don't come up to GM specs for fit, finish, and corrosion protection. How do you protect yourself? Ask to see a repair order before insurance work begins and insist on genuine General Motors parts. Remember, it's your car and it's your choice. Opening the second half, Michigan had deferred, of course, at the top of the game, and then they decided to get the football at the third quarter. And, Bo, I thought that was critical, because in the third yeah. quarter, with the football and a six-point lead, if the offense gets something going, right. could get momentum back and put you right back in business. Well, it's the second week in a row we didn't move after uh, the half, and uh, that's not been our uh, game plan. We've always been the team that comes out the second half and moves the football. But uh, we just didn't uh, do a good job. Now, we did attempt to throw early and uh, came up a little bit short, and that put us in a bind a little bit, so. And after you did move, talk about big plays. They don't get much bigger than this. No, this is unbelievable that we uh, missed the tackle down here, and we just didn't play this play worth a nickel. You see, that's the type of thing that just shouldn't happen. But, uh, you know, give them credit. They came up with a big play. It was the first play of the second half, and they went 70 yards with it. And, uh, took the lead. And just like that, they got a one-point lead, but right. then again, you start to move the football. Well, we've all, we always have been able to move it. I mean, uh, you know, just, but uh, here's a third and nine, and uh, we put the ball up in the air for an interception. They take it down to our 19, and then, of course, that uh, leads to their uh, second touchdown, and uh, they go up uh, 20 to 13. And uh, again, they go through the air for most because you shut down the run. They uh, probably called 35, 38 passes, I would say. Uh, I thought Tupa had a great game against us. I also felt that his scrambling uh, hurt us because we'd put some pressure on him. He'd step up there and scramble on us. And they rolled out a little bit with him and let him hit a checkoff receiver an awful lot or a dump-off guy. Well, he did because uh, when he stepped up in there, I, uh, always the short man was available there. Here, um, Demetrius fumbles the ball, and they get it right back on us again. Now it's your defense has to come back up and start making the big plays. Well, third down, 27, they had already made a few. Uh, they go back and uh, run a draw play here and fumble the ball, uh, and we recover. Um, 
that was a big play for us. I think they were running a conservative play, anticipating a punt, uh, and unfortunately, the ball carrier fumbled the ball. Uh, here we fake off tackle and uh, keep the ball and go down to the 30-yard line, so we're knocking at the door again. And one of the things about this drive, about this drive, and I don't know whether you sensed it, was getting this team back in the game offensively. Right. And what we did, uh, Jim, was to run inside because they were trying to take the outside stuff and the off-tackle stuff away, so we pounded inside a little bit and um, got down in there and scored to tie the score. So Horde goes in from 10 yards on a great run, and that ties it at 20. Uh, but then Ohio State comes back with a real big drive of their own when they had to. Well, that's what uh, really hurt, you know, when uh, we kicked them down in there uh, to the 15-yard line, and then they came out with a long drive that resulted in the uh, winning field goal. Uh, and there was a lot of short stuff and uh, a couple of scrambles by Tupa and, and uh, did a good job. Here's the third and nine after Tupa got uh, shaken up, and they hit this pass on the sideline. Uh, for a first down, which was uh, not good. And finally get him stopped, and they go for the field goal and get it. And uh, still, I felt very confident. We had plenty of time left. We could have moved the football down in there and scored. And we moved than... up here and uh, ran in reverse with uh, Colasar. Uh, we were out to almost midfield again. Jim. A little better than five and a half minutes when you got the ball. Sure. And, uh, you know, we're... We're beyond midfield now and uh, confident that we can roll it down in there. But uh, unfortunately, the next play uh, put us out of the ball game. Uh, that fumble uh, finished it. We ended up with uh, four turnovers, Jim, and uh, that would give us somewhere around uh, 30 or more for the year. And uh, I've never seen a year where the ball's been turned over so much by a Michigan team. In retrospect, as you look back at this season, uh, the finish at 7-4, and four, uh, two really big come-from-behind victories uh, after you had lost to Indiana at 4-3. and three, um, Been injured, uh, kind of hanging in there uh, with this yeah, group of that's, guys. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, uh, they're, they're a very fine uh, group of guys. There's some good talent there. Uh, some of us a little young to be playing, really, uh, but uh, injuries necessitated that. And um, I can see them um, uh, before too long growing up. Uh, not turning the ball over, uh, playing a little better defense. We got to do uh, we got to do a job with our secondary, and uh, so uh, it's a very very young team. And uh, frankly, they played like it. They they were they were fun, but uh, you know, in order to win football games, you cannot turn it over, and you cannot give big plays on defense. And again, I think that it uh, indicates that the young guys make mistakes. Because they all happen to seem in big games, you know, and in, in the other yeah. games, the, the big key games, the Ohio States, the Michigan States, the Notre Dames, the Indianas, those kinds of things well, happen. in the other games, you can uh, overcome some of those, you know, and maybe in the past, when our defense was so strong, we could do that. But uh, struggling like we have been uh, in that phase of the game, we just can't afford to turn it over. When we get the ball, we've got to do something with it. Well, let's take a little a brighter look now at one of the great running backs in Michigan history. His name is Jamie. Don't go away. Michigan's all-time ground gainer is next. Avoid the Noid. With the Domino's Pizza Guarantee. We guarantee your pizza will be delivered within 30 minutes or you get $3 off your order. Guaranteed. And we guarantee your pizza will taste great. If you're not satisfied with your pizza, we'll replace it or refund your money. Only our pizza is guaranteed to avoid the noise. Domino's Pizza delivers. Call now. Driving technology into tomorrow. Scottsdale, Arizona. Built from little more than desert sun and desert air. Where city leaders use computers to connect every department of city government. Computers from Unisys. Unisys 
helped Scottsdale's leaders meet growing demand so efficiently that over the last six years, property taxes have actually gone down. Unisys and government, the power of two. It's a pathway that leads from here to tomorrow, from sea to shining sea. The great American love belongs to you. been some great running backs at Michigan. Butch Wolfolk and Rob Lytle have been two of the best. As a matter of fact, they were 1-2 in all-time yardage. Both were big, powerful runners. But move over, guys. Here comes 5-foot, 6-inch, 180-pound Jamie Morris. He has run past both Lytle and Wolfolk as Michigan's all-time leading rusher. Jamie's rise to the top began with a rough start, even before he had enrolled. It was the coldest day <laughs> in Michigan history, too, <laughs> on my recruiting trip. So, and uh, if that, you know, if I didn't love Michigan, then I would never love Michigan. And when I met Coach Schimbeck, like, my heart just dropped, you know. And uh, uh, I just decided that it was going to be Michigan. From that time on, Coach Schembechler's heart has dropped a few times as he's watched an unlikely little guy break long-standing records. But as Jamie says, even Bo needed to be convinced. I've opened up a lot of things with Coach Schembechler that he didn't think that I could do. I think uh, my durability, you know, being able to get up from hits that, pe you know, people expected me to stay down, uh, going out and get 100 yards against you know, hard teams and stuff like that. And, you know, he, he just looks at me, what is wrong with this kid, you know? Is he, is he on something or something? And uh, I just like to see him because he's enthusiastic. He keeps, he keeps me going. Jamie's durability is amazing. Besides gaining more yards, he's also carried more times than anyone else. He's taken some big shots, but always pops back up. He even surprises himself sometimes. A lot of hits I've seen on, you know, myself on TV and everything from videotape or anything. It's like, wow, why did I get, why, why did I get up from that? What am I doing, you know? But, um, you know, when I'm out there on the field and I get hit really hard, I take an inventory check before I get up, and it's real quick, and I jump, pop, pop back up, and, you know, I shake my head, and everything's okay, and go back to the huddle for the next play. This is the place where I want it to be, and if, it's, if, it, if it was going to happen anywhere, I want it to happen here because it, it's something that, when I was a little kid, when I watched uh, AC play, Anthony Kahn, it was, it was incredible, you know, and uh, if, I wanted, if, if a record had to be broken, I would want it to be here. I never thought that uh, I'd get an opportunity to play or, you know, just to start and, and have a career such as this one. But, it was just a dream come true all the way. Jamie has also been a dream come true to Michigan football. But there is one thing Jamie would like to change. I'm not a cute little kid anymore. I've matured now. I want people to know that. <laughs> and if the NFL doesn't call Jamie to the pros, he's got his eye on another career that fits him to a T. Welcome to Michigan Replay. I'm Jamie Morris, your host, along with Bo Schimbeckler, Jim Brandstanner is out this week, probably out for love, ever. <laughs> See, now, if Jamie gets the job, I won't be here next year, and you'll have an easy time of it. In spite of what he says, he's still a cute little kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, he is something, though, for a guy you recruited yeah. to be a kick returner. Well, he's, uh, I, I... He's a fantastic football player. I can't believe, I love to watch him play. 
and uh, will miss him a lot because uh, he does things that I just can't believe can be done out there. And you couldn't have dreamed in your best wishes of what Jamie Morris could be that he would ultimately become the all-time leading rusher in Michigan history. Oh, I wouldn't have bet anybody on that. But I wouldn't have bet against him after his freshman year. After I had seen him as an 18-year-old freshman, I would not have bet against him being a great one. He really has come on, and, and you talk about uh, it a big, being a big man's game. Well, if you've got a big heart and you're like Jamie Morris, you can play. Well, uh, I'll, I'll, he's the type of football player that does not come down the pike very often because he gives you a great effort every single time he comes to practice. He is an all-around football player. Now, in the highlight film you showed, there's some tremendous moves and great runs and all that. But when he doesn't have the ball, he's going to fake for you, he's going to catch the ball for you, he's going to block for you. He'll pick up the blitzes, he'll stick his nose in there. He's just a great all-around player. Well, to honor Jamie and to honor the rest of the Wolverines this year, be sure and join Michigan and salute the Wolverines at their annual football bus. For ticket information...